Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to speak here. It's the first time I am speaking to Cytoscape developers community and users and not to biologists only. <laughs> So it's an exciting opportunity, and I will talk today about the enrichment network analysis and visualization plugin uh, that we developed in Agilent recently. Um, and this plugin is for integrative statistical analysis and visualization of multiple sample matched data sets. So it's a long name, and I'll tell you what is it all about. Um, so why Invis? Um, as we heard yesterday, and we all know that um, these days there are many high throughput data sets measured in the same set of samples available. Some of these data sets are omics data sets, it's genomics, gene expression, um, non-coding RNA expression, and all of this, proteomics data set, metabolomics data sets. Um, of course, not always they're measured in the same set of samples, but often they are. Um, Together with that, there are a lot of databases with rich systematic annotations like Go or pathway databases like CAG or Wikipathways, or drug target databases, and others. So the question that we asked was, how do we analyze this data together to get deeper biological insights into studied phenotypes? Um, kind of from Agilent point of view, this slide doesn't look right on the screen, but it does look right here. So from Agilent point of view, um, we basically make a lot of instruments that measure this high throughput data set. So we have protein measurements, we have NMR, we have metabolo metabolomics, metabolite measurements, we measure DNA and RNA, microRNAs, we manufacture microarrays, we have target enrichment solutions for pulling parts of the genomes for sequencing and so forth and so on. And also, with some of these instruments, we have software that provides basic analysis of the data coming of the instruments to tell you some of the biological answers, like which genes are uh, differentially expressed, like gene spring, or copy number changes, like genomic workbench, and identifying mass pe peaks in mass hunter workstation. So all together, we, again, want to put these measurements and primary analysis together, together with public data from different data sets to get further biological insight through integrated analysis and help formulate hypotheses, experiments, and models to may maybe do a next round of measurements. So that was kind of motivation on the Agilent side to get involved in that. And several years ago, my colleagues were involved in um, breast cancer study that was a collaboration with um, Norwegian Radium Hospital in Oslo with Annalisa Boris and Daly's lab that profiled the 100 breast tumor samples with various characteristics using actually a number of technologies as they were coming available. So in this study, they looked at matched uh, microRNA and mRNA data. So it, was my, it is microarray data, 100 um, breast cancer primary tumors, um, and did integrative analysis of this data. So what was the analysis? So basically, uh, what was done, we looked at the profile of each microRNA across 100 samples and sorted expression measurements for this microRNA. So this is the top um, plot here with blue dots. And then for each gene on the microarray, we computed correlation of the profile of the gene to the profile of the microRNA and sorted these genes by their correlation. So on the top of the list, the genes are most correlated, and you can see that the higher red expression values on the right and lower green expression value on the left. And I'm sorry for red-green color scheme. It's just a figure from the paper. Uh, so you get this sorted list of genes. And then uh, logical next steps as done with a lot of gene sets uh, analysis these genes were run through enrichment analysis. Uh, in the case of this paper, it was done with Go ontology. And many um, gene ontology terms were identified as extremely significant. In this case, it's immune response that got a p-value of 10 to the minus 147 with all sorts of statistical corrections, like Bonferroni corrections and so forth. So, of course, this was a lot of work. And we had 800 microRNAs that were measured on microRNA arrays. For each of them, we ran gene ontology analysis. And then for each of them, some gene ontology terms 
were, were coming as significant, and um, to navigate through the sea of results, that was a really daunting task. And the time when, uh, you know, when, when they were working on the paper, they did some biological validation. For example, for MIR-19A, they showed that it really affected proliferation, used high-throughput transfection assays, and showed the transfection of MIR-19A to MCF7 breast cancer cell lines resulted in increased proliferation. So again, this was like some validation that showed us that this analysis is useful and may be important. Uh, but at the time, basically, one graduate student who was working on this could do this analysis and get to the meaningful results. So we were thinking how to generalize it and how to give it to uh, other people who can have other problems and um, um, kind of approach this data set, uh, approach this um, problem a little bit more globally. So Roy and one, my colleague in Agile in Tel Aviv, um, wrapped this analysis in a more generic, what we call three matrices software. When we start with um, just a matrix, let's say your typical gene expression matrix with rows of genes and columns of samples, this is primary measurement. And then the second measurement in the same set of samples, but it's uh, other entities, in this case microRNAs, or it can be metabolites or uh, something else which we call pivot data. And then the third matrix is um, annotation, which can be pathways, gene ontology, or anything else. Um, we didn't put any restriction what kind of annotation it's, um, is provided. And then in the analysis, the first step is to compute the correlation. So you take each pivot entry, so each row of the pivot data, compute correlations of primary data to this row, sort, uh, uh, and get the correlation matrices, and then you take the annotation and compute enrichment of these correlations with respect to other annotations. So which most correlated genes are enriched in which go terms or in pathways. And then at the end of the day, you get this um, matrix that's basically of the size number of your annotation categories, that may be thousands, and number of your pivot data entries, which may be hundreds, typically. And um, um, so this is the core of the analysis, but then the next question is how do we go about understanding it and visualizing it? So that's where CITES came, uh, came into play because, of course, we thought, okay, we will visualize this as a network. and. Um, this network is actually a bipartite graph. There are two types of nodes. And um, one type of nodes are annotation categories. In these examples, are we, they are wiki pathways. They are rectangles with color yellow to red by significance of enrichment. And the other type of nodes are um, gray nodes. These are microRNAs or pivot entries. And you have a connection if you have a significant enrichment of genes that belong to the uh, node category where, uh, when they're sorted by their correlation to the pivot. So that's uh, Cytoscape screenshot. This is 2.8. This is not ported to 3 yet. Um, let me just go a little bit. Oh, that's, sorry. So this example is for Go. For Go enrichment, for Go enrichment, we actually do two types of visualization. On the left, it's the same bipartite graph. And on the right, it's a more traditional gene ontology directed graph, or tree, where uh, in this case, gene ontology nodes are colored by the cumulative enrichment across different uh, pivot terms. So in a little bit more detail, um, this um, plugin is pretty uh, user-friendly. We have a very nice uh, collapsible panel that guide you through the analysis and visualization. <laughs> so on the left, uh, on the top of the panel, you see kind of this diagram to help you load the data sets to figure out which is a primary data and which is pivot data and which are annotations. Everything is clickable. You can drag and drop the file on each of these rectangles. You can just click on the rectangle and get to the file chooser and select the file. Um, once you select this file names are populated here, and you also specify the output file. 
and run the analysis. So when everything is loaded, the analysis button is enabled. Um, if you say run the analysis and save results, you can open another time, another Cytoscape session and just load the results file and visualize it. You don't have to run the analysis again. Um, for pathways on the data sets that we try, uh, tried, the whole analysis is taking about a minute for on, a, on my laptop, not on anything stronger than that. And um, for gene ontology, because there are 8,000 terms, it takes about 10 minutes. But again, if you run it, then you can save results and just load them up next time. Um, so uh, after you select uh, and run, in, in this example, you see that the file names are populated here. Um, you can choose the organism for which you display the network. Uh, Right now, we're supporting human, mouse, and tuberculosis, but uh, we're planning to expand this. You can select cutoffs for um, significant cutoffs for which edges to display, and then it will build the network. Um, and of course, because it's uh, in Cytoscape, you can zoom in and actually see the details of um, different annotation nodes and different microRNA nodes. You can notice that here the um, edges have two colors, red and green, uh, red and blue. Um, actually, in the correlation analysis, we did the enrichment for the genes sorted from the most correlated to the least correlated and in the opposite direction, from the least correlated uh, to the most correlated because in microRNA case, it makes no sense. Um, so of course you can zoom in and inspect the details of every edge, what's the significance, what are their um, underlying enrichment numbers, but it's not end of the story in the plugin. So actually you can click on each edge and bring the pathway, in this case it's wiki pathway view, uh, alongside with it. So it automatically zooms on part of the network where you clicked, it brings the pathways, and genes here are color coded by correlation. So you immediately see which actually genes are correlated to your pivot or your microRNA entry and which are not in the pathway. But as you can see from this network, there are many nodes that have multiple edges. So if you click on the node, then the um, tiled pathway views is uh, coming up with uh, up to 15 um, <coughs> views of this pathway corresponding to 15 most significant edges. In this case, it's only eight because that's uh, how many cell cycle has. And again, each tiled view of the pathway is covered by corresponding correlations. So uh, the advantage of small multiples view is that you can see patterns of what's happening and you basically see that some are uh, correlated the red and some are anti-correlated the blue and you can see which genes are actually coming up as correlated in one uh, instances of the pathway and which ones are not coming. So this uh, second in the middle, top one in the middle is mostly correlated and this one is mostly anti-correlated. So a little bit more uh, detail about gene ontology analysis. Um, so this view is the view of the network where each gene ontology node is connected to each pivot for which correlated genes are enriched. And this is the summary view where all gene ontology terms are connected into a directed graph and the significance, the color of the node is the cumulative uh, significance of all edges coming into this node. So it's kind of a big overview of what's happening in your data set. However, if you click here on any specific node, then this tree will be colored by its specific enrichments. So you can see it both and it, you can also do a tiled view. So if you go back to the example I started with, with MIR-150 from the paper, there it is. And there is an uh, immune response term here, so we get the same results as was, um, they got in the paper, of course, because it's the same data, but we have all this rich visualization and uh, exploration that we can do. So just to summarize, um, so the key feature of Invis is that we analyze 
two measured data sets, primary data set and secondary data set, and also together with the annotation that can be downloaded from different databases or uh, your own annotation, kind of all together via correlation analysis as an example. Uh, results are represented as a bipartite graph in Cytoscape. For pathways, for wiki pathways and for gene ontology, we have customized visualizations that make sense. Of course, if you supply your own annotation, you won't have customized visualization. And you can zoom in into results in the context of wiki pathways um, um, and see actually underlying correlations there. Um, the plugin is interactive and intuitive, at least as far as data loading is concerned. And of course, after you generated this network, you have all power of network analysis and Cytoscape available to you to analyze it and compare to other net networks. So at this point, um, this uh, plugin is in better release stage. It's ready for collaborators. If you're interested, email me. Uh, we're still working on some performance issues, completeness and robustness for full Cytoscape plugin release. Uh, we'll expand organism support beyond humans, mouse, and tuberculosis. Um, currently, we're supporting uh, 3ID um, database mapping, but we'll um, expand this as time goes on. And um, other features that we're interested in adding is heat map view for primary and pivot data, grouping of the samples, because um, in this case, I showed you basically that all samples were disease samples, but of course, there are many data sets when you have no case control designs. Um, as well as support more built-in annotation types. So, of course, uh, projects like this have work of many people. On Agile side is mainly Alan Kuczynski, um, responsible for the design of the plugin. Uh, Mike Creech, responsible for actual implementation. The plugin won't be available without Mike's work. Uh, Roy Navon and Zori Heaney worked on the methodology for the enrichment analysis, as well as uh, Zora's PhD student, Israel Steinfeld at the Technion. And we really think, thank all our collaborators, both in Oslo and here in UCSF, and the Cytoscore, Cytoscape core development team and PIs helping uh, us along the way. Thank you. From and each one node. One yeah. Node. And by the time I get 40 small multiples of that, you know, yeah. It's tiny. Have you, have so you we currently, we, because of the display issue and that we wanted to make it meaningful, it's limited at 15. So each edge has a statistical significance of enrichment with it. So we just take the most significant one and just show 15, up to 15. If you want to see another one, you just click on the edge, on the and edge. you bring it up, yeah. yeah. But it won't be shown together and like automatically laid out in several multiple yeah. Right, which breaks some of the advantages from the Right, but then, again, that should be a configurable number depending on your display or, <laughs> or your data set or whatever. Right now, what made sense for us trying was 15. Okay, good, thank you. You mean different pathway views? Yeah, basically you've got more than 15. So you first, each together. pathway, the color coding of genes in the pathway depends on the context of the edge. Okay, so it doesn't make sense to show everything on one instance of the pathway. Yes, 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 you can do that, but that's, yeah. Again, uh, if there is interest, <laughs> that's the list of features we can work on.